This is the rich dark chocolate blend original cacao. Cacao. What's that? Drink. Um, so nine to seven five three. Even though it's the darkest, a little less. I needed that. A less. Oh yeah. I really did need that. It's all about the person. Time to cool off. So good. They serve watermelon samples in on that long table over there all day long. Mm. Four different varieties. Mm. I just met Leslie Lowe, who is a landscape architect at the expo, and I want you to hear about what she does. She designs food forests in the wilds of Whitefish, Montana, and southeastern British Columbia. That's amazing. And you were saying they're about one acre each that you yep. designed? Yeah. But very different clients, right? Yeah. One is a Buddhist meditation center. The other is an organic farm that has both lamb and chicken also. So they wanted something that they can use for the future. Right. Not just today, but ongoing. Right. And. Uh, and the, it's cold hardy, so they're designed for our winters, so our rough winters with lots of snow and cold temperatures. Oh, how much summer do you have? Like three months? Uh, from, say, April it starts to get warm. We can plant in the end of May, generally, seeds. And uh, but we could have frost by the middle of August. This year it'll probably go wow. to the end of September. Okay, so you've only got three good months to grow. Yeah, but we can grow apples. Pears, yeah. plums, cherries, all sorts of kinds, different kinds of berries. So in your food forest, do you focus more on uh, perennials than annuals? Yeah, mostly just because of uh, the economics of it, right? We're looking for something that year after year after year produces. And annuals are, are whether it's tomatoes or vegetables, there's a lot of work every year to rejuvenate that, to That's restart true. it. So we want something that continues. Right, that's awesome. And, and you yes. and you were saying your one of your biggest challenges is bears. Bears and elk. I don't have that problem in LA. So bears and elk. Yeah, we have to have six or to elk. seven foot high fences, and we have to hot wire the top and the bottom so the bears can't climb underneath that fence. They get zapped on their back or their noses. Do they get trained to kind of know that that's the wire and they don't want to go anywhere near it? We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or is it always a new bear? Yeah, it could be. Oh gosh. It could be. So, and we got badgers. Oh. A clear sky. This is a food forest in British Columbia. Let me hold that while you talk about it. And uh, they have badgers and they're dancing in the, in the food forest. They have a little video of the badger actually dancing. It's quite cool. Well, is, are badgers welcome in your garden? They are because they take care of the vole population. And uh, voles are a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah. And between that and raptors, you know, it kind of it really helps. Did you say raptors? Yeah. What kind Hawks. of raptors are we talking? Eagles. Okay. Hawks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got any snakes up there? No garden snakes. Oh, good. <laughs> no, no rattlers. Okay, good. <laughs> well, are you enjoying the expo? I'm having a fantastic time. What do you like best about the expo? Oh, it's like eye candy everywhere. All these fantastic colors. I've heard some amazing speakers. Dr. Vandana Shiva was oh, extraordinary. And I am just so excited. That's awesome. Well, thank you well, so much for talking to us. Uh, my <laughs> pleasure. All right. Hi, we're the Sustainable Ag Strip with a whole bunch of group vendors um, with Boogie Brew at its center just because we're local. This is one of my vendors. This is Brian from OGS and his beautiful wife Carmen. They make the world's best worm castings. This is not their first rodeo with us here at the Sustainable Ag Strip. This is Leah, the real Boogie Boss, and by the way, I'm Josh. We're here to help people with high octane, organic, natural, and extremely affordable bulk granola recipes to make their plants dance, to add life to their soil, Happy soil is made by happy worms, etc. So OGS from Malibu, California, 
Boogie Brew right here from 707 Grow Code. I have just run into two more of my fans at the uh, National Heirloom Expo. This is Ubaldo Solorio, UV, UV Silorio. And this is Lizzie Garden Bee Instagram. And do you, ha do you have a YouTube channel? No, I don't. Okay, and you, but you're watching my channel. Yes, exactly. Oh, oh my gosh. And do you have a garden? Yes, I have. Where, where do you live? I'm in Pleasanton. Where? Bay Area. In the Bay Area. Yeah, in Bay. the Bay Area. Uh, now, how, are we connected through Dennis from Gardening yes, in Ontario? Yes, yes, Dennis. Dennis Gardening hey, Dennis. on Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to give me um, seeds. Wakatai. Yeah, seeds from this. Hi, my name is Sapna. And uh, I just find your video is like so soothing, therapeutic for me because when I'm watching something, I wanted to relax. And I'm watching your video is like really mu musical, you know, therapeutic, like uh, so soothing for me. Just one word, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Miguel Elliott. I'm with Living Earth Structures. And I'm here at the Heirloom Expo in Santa Rosa working on uh, sharing natural building with people so we're doing uh, adobe construction right so we have a uh, material of earth we've been mixing up with our feet and just using local clay mixed with sand and straw and uh, i have a little mobile mud hut here the kids have been enjoying going into and i have a little adobe oven over here that we've been cooking squash there's lots of squash all over so we've been letting people choose a squash and then they put it in the oven and then in an hour it's cooked to perfection this morning we had so many students here from all over the county coming here and so we made little house models using earth and it's, it's been a lot of fun so it's, it's teaching awesome. people about natural building this is a, a structure made out of wooden shipping pallets insulated with straw and covered in an adobe mixture cob so i call it the little brown caboose so i've been driving this around and children have been enjoying being inside and amazed at how cool it is on a hot day like this and so this is to demonstrate the idea of using pallets as a building material which I think is about the best solution I've come across for low-cost housing yeah, because it's very well insulated, very durable and uh, cheap. It doesn't really cost me anything at all to build these and so I can build structures all different sizes using pallets with straw and earth. 